ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على سيد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته ومن ولا فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أيها الأخوة الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected brothers Today I would like to just touch upon a subject that has very deep roots and very wide implications. And we would like to just select just a lesson from this very broad subject. The subject of Islamic loyalty. Al-Wala. In the Salah of the Imam, he recited a verse, Allahu waliyu ladhina amanu, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim. Allahu waliyu ladhina amanu, yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila al-nur. Wa ladhina kafaru, awliyauhum al-taagood. Yukhrijunuhum min al-nur ila al-dhulumat, ulaika ashabu al-nar, hum fiha khalidun. The translation of which is, has been rendered, Allah is the wali, that he is the protector and the patron of those who believe. And through his protection and guidance, he brings those who believe from the darkness of the jahiliyyah into the light of Islam. And those who disbelieve, they take as a wali, a protector, a patron, and a guide their many tawaghit, their different objects of worship, their gods, their false gods, their leaders, their heroes, their tribes or their nafs. And these tawaghit, these objects of worship, these false objects of worship, delivers them or brings them out from or precludes them from guidance and delivers them into darkness. And this is because they are the people of the hellfire. And the hellfire is the place as a result of their actions where they will dwell. As I mentioned, this is a very wide topic that touches upon many things. But in my advice today, I want to only touch upon the issue of wala as it applies to the many groups that people find themselves in, engaged in. And as a result, they find themselves attached to and how attachment to groups undermines the spirit of wala, that is allegiance and loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before Islam, Arabs would be brought up in a tribe that protected their money, their lives, and their honor in such a manner that they became proud of their tribe. 
And it was natural for anyone to be proud of their tribe. This pride would remain with the individual whether his tribe was doing right or wrong. And it caused the individual to have patriotism and to have his or her loyalty to that tribe. And it became natural for the society to be loyal primarily to one's race and one's tribe. It was this tribal loyalty that prevented those people when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called them to Islam, many of them, when they were asked about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they said, yes, they do believe in Allah. Yes, they accepted Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the Messenger. There was enough evidence among them, both in his character and the revelation which was brought. But they could not divorce themselves from the loyalty of their tribe. And this is exactly what the survival instinct is all about. And it is something that is also present in animals. Even animals have this kind of loyalty. Consequently, the survival instinct became the source of the conviction and the concepts about life, society, and its individuals carried and adhered to it. Now today, people don't call it tribalism. They call it patriotism. And one of the signs of patriotism is names, flags, countries, clothing, food, culture. Contrary to this, Islam made the loyalty or the wala to the Islamic Aqidah. And impressed this Aqidah upon the human psyche so that this Aqidah served as the umbrella for all loyalty. And this Islamic wala, that is loyalty to Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was used in the Quran to mean to protect, to follow, and submit completely with acceptance, sincerity, and love, whatever Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ordered. It made the aqidah of Islam the basis from which the convictions and concepts about life emanated. It completely revolutionized the concepts of loyalty in the hearts and minds of all whom entered Islam. As seen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, He said, O you who believe, do not take your fathers and your brothers as allies, awliya. If they choose disbelief over Iman, and whoever does this, they are evildoers. And we have an example of this. On one occasion, the son of Abu Bakr radiallahu an, when he became a Muslim, he mentioned to his father, O oh, Father, I saw you on many excursions, meaning on the battlefield. But I could never bring myself to cause any harm to you, or in words like this. Abu Bakr radiallahu an turned to his son and told him, O oh, son, I never saw you. But if I had seen you, I would have killed you for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the difference between Abu Bakr and his son. The judgment is different. So there is a verse from the Quran. 
and the suburb. On the occasion of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, you will not find those who, who believe loving those who disbelieve, even if it be their fathers or their sons or their nearest of kin. Because Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, he demonstrated love for Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and not love for his son. This is in the 58th surah, the 22nd verse. You will never find any people who believe in Allah in the last day, loving those who opposed Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though it be their fathers, their sons, or their brothers, or their tribe. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became a prophet, he invited people from the Jahiliya, the ignorant society, to Islam in Mecca. This invitation was extended to all people in the society without any restriction to any specific group, tribe, or race. Those who responded to his call became a part of his group. This initial group, who we affectionately call the Sahaba, the Ashab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu anhum, this included Bilal al-Habashi, a black man from Ethiopia, a Suhaib al-Rumi, a white man from Rome, a Salman al-Farisi, a Persian slave, Ali radiallahu an, Hamza, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, and Uthman radiallahu an, all of them, those from the high class or the elite of Mecca, and Ammar ibn Yasir, and Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhuma from the common class of Mecca. Whereas before Islam, there would have been tribal and racial barriers between these members of the Prophet sallallahu initial group. But through Islam, these barriers were eliminated and loyalty or wala to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was only to Allah and only to his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, there are three qualities. Whomsoever has tasted them, has tasted what he called Halawat al-Iman. Halawat al-Iman, the sweetness of faith. The first of which is, that a person loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mimma siwahuma more so than all else other than those two. To love Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more so than all else besides those two means responding to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Obeying Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taking the judgment of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam preferring what Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam offered us as opposed to whatsoever we desire for ourselves placing the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the order of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a priority in our lives giving up that which we have been accustomed to following whether it be our family, our desires, our ambition, our tribe, our profession, our careers, giving that up as a priority in consideration to what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, has ordered for us. This revolutionary understanding of wala gave the Muslims the true sense of freedom and liberty. They were liberated from their whims their wishes, their color, their tribe, their social class, and would submit only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a very good, very short hadith I'd like to read for you. What the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, An Abi 
محمد عبد الله ابن عمر ابن عمر ابن عاص رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون حواه تابعا لما جئت به and this hadith is Hassan and Sahih on the authority of Abu Muhammad Abdullah the son of Amr ibn As radiallahu anhuma who said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said none of you truly believes until his inclination is in accordance with what I have brought and this is a good and a sound hadith which we have transmitted from Kitab al-Hujjah with a sound chain of authorities. Here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam characterized that none of us can truly believe until their hawa, the hawa, their desires, their inclination, their opinion, their feeling, their idea, their attachments is in accordance with what I have brought. In accordance with what I have brought, in accordance with what? With the Quran and the Sunnah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam expressed for us that the loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone was not just a characteristic of a select few who helped Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his da'wah but rather it was a characteristic that was transferred to the entire society upon the establishment of the new way of life or the Islamic State. That is because the Islamic State was established with the Islamic aqidah as its basis. This resulted in a society that reflected in all of its aspects the loyalty to Allah through the observance of the halal and the haram. One of the signs in a believer of wala, loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that when they know something is halal, when they know something is haram, they don't think about the benefit any longer. They give it up because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have ordered them to give it up. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولِ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْ فَانْتَهُوا So, take what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives to you and leave alone that which he has forbidden you. What the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given to us is halal for us. And what he has prevented from, for us is haram, and he has made it clear. One of the signs of loyalty in the believer is that they don't consider the difficulty of giving up haram. They don't consider the benefit of the haram. They don't consider, they only consider that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has given to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the parameters of the halal and the haram and that's it. As a consequence of this clear vision of where the individual and the state's loyalty lies, the Islamic State embarked upon a campaign to carry Islam to the whole world. This wala, this loyalty of the Islamic State began, as I remind you, with that small group of people that included those individuals that diversity of individuals from the high class, from the lower class, from the working class, from those black and from those white, and those Roman and those Persian, and those Ansar, and those Muhajireen, 
those rich and those poor, from those people, those men and women, who gave their loyalty to the Prophet because he was the messenger of Allah who swore their allegiance to the Prophet to spend their lives and to spend their properties and to give their blood and to sacrifice themselves in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their love of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we can remember on the occasion when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam invited his companions to make a sacrifice in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, he brought half of his wealth. And he considered this to have been a major sacrifice and he was very proud of that but when Abu Bakr came Abu Bakr he brought all of his wealth and when the Prophet وسلم, asked Abu Bakr what he had left for his family what was the response of Abu Bakr he said Allahu wa Rasuluhu Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And it was by the suggestion or the order of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that Abu Bakr took back some of his wealth for his family. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that there was no one from among the Muslims who displayed his loyalty to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa similar to that of Abu Bakr. It was this group that formed the core of the original family of the Prophet وسلم, those who offered their loyalty to the Prophet وسلم. And from this group, the Islamic State developed, which led to the annexation of the lands as diverse as Iraq, Egypt, Yemen, and the heart of Africa. Because the Islamic State was carrying a message to these lands, the basis of which is loyalty to one creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was quickly able to melt the differences between these various groups and people without resistance from them. Islam caused them to shift their loyalties and their alliances towards the aqidah of Islam, away from the kings, the races, the philosophies, and the lands and the cultures to the extent that these newcomers, these new Muslims, started learning Islam even better than some of the Arabs who carried it to them. People like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, Salahuddin al Ayyubi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all of them. All of them were of non-Arab descent, and they made phenomenal contributions to Islam that we rely upon today. All of them adopted the Islamic aqidah. They learned Islam and then worked wholeheartedly to understand and to implement the rules of Islam and to hold the wala of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam greater than anything else had nationalism racism or social class served as a reference in the islamic state and its society salahuddin al ayubi as one he was from kurdish origin he would never have worked as hard as he did to liberate jerusalem from the european crusaders he would have left it up to the arabs Had the Ashab of Rasulullah sallallahu focused on themselves, their race, their tribe, or their color, or had they not expended all of their efforts towards the dominance of the new faith, Islam would not have been established. With the adoption of the Islamic aqidah, 
People no longer remained as Arabs, whites or blacks. They refused to remain as slaves to these false masters. Rather, they relied upon and submitted to the real master and creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowadays, when we look at the Muslim Ummah at large, we find the Muslim Ummah separated along the lines of a large number of national entities through a conspiracy brought to them by the Kuffar. The Kuffar conspired against the Muslims, separated them, gave them different states, gave them back their cultures, identified them again as races, gave them their, each their own sovereignty, gave them their own pride, and then after that, conquered them and poisoned them. We find the Muslims today, most of them, in spite of saying that they are Muslims, in spite of saying that they have wala for Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have them finding, we have them showing and displaying their loyalty to their leaders, loyalty to groups, loyalty to ethnicity, loyalty to nationalism, loyalty to family, loyalty to, again, false gods, tawaghat, such as color, race, tribe, and the artificial p political borders that divide the ummah. Today, you find Muslims who consider themselves to be very strong, very committed, but an Arab will not give his daughter to a Pakistani. And a Pakistani will not give his daughter to an African. And a Somali will not give his daughter to a Bosnian, and so forth and so on. This itself is one of the indications of the poison that is placed among the Ummah of the Muslims. Not saying that anyone would not desire the natural marriage partner from among their people. It is natural. But to adopt a position of prejudice and hatred to the degree that we will find Muslims cutting off their daughters because their daughters entered a halal marriage with someone whom they love who was outside of their family just yesterday. Just yesterday, an Eritrean sister came to me and told me that she married outside of her family and she has three children from that marriage, but that her family has on several occasions broke into her house, beat up her husband, dragged him out into the street in front of the people kicked her in her face, beat her up, stripped her clothes off of her. Muslims, because she married outside of their family. This is in Australia. And because she's Eritrean, no Muslims in that city came to her aid. They said it was a family issue. And she said to me, she went to the welfare, social welfare people, and they told her, we will make this an issue, but you will have to sign the papers because your family will go to jail. She asked me, what should she do? I said, don't sign the papers. Don't bring the kuffar in, even though your family probably deserves to go to jail. Don't bring the kuffar involved in this issue and send them to jail. See if we can get somebody who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who has loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See if we can find some Muslims in that city 
who will address this issue and see if they will help you. If you cannot find any Muslims to address you in this issue, then get the justice from whom you can get the justice from. We can see from this example that the Muslims in many cases is far away from the aqidah of Islam. How do we think Umar an would have dealt with that issue? How do we think that Ali ibn Abi Talib an would have dealt with that issue? This is an example. There's only one example. We can find thousands of examples here in Australia, in America, in Europe, all over the world where Muslims are acting with wala towards their families, towards their tribe, towards their people. Dear Muslims, some Muslims still think of themselves as Arab, Pakistani, Indian, South African, African American, African Caribbean, putting their nationalities before Islam, putting their citizenship even before Islam, carrying labels as Arab, Pakistani, black, white means that we have not yet eliminated our differences the way that Islam eliminated the differences of the Muslims before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us, Inna akramakum indallah atqaakum. Verily, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the people who have the most taqwa. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He is not one of us who calls for asabiyya, nationalism or racism or who fights for asabiyya, or who dies for asabiyya. And this is a hadith is narrated or collected by Abu Dawood. This asabiyya contaminates our allegiance and loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It robs us of the true freedom and liberty and places us under a new form of slavery, one that is far worse than the slavery, one that is far worse than the oppression, one that is far worse than the fitna with the Muslims are suffering from the invasion to their lands. Dear Muslims, nationalism, Tribalism, culturalism robs us of our true freedom and liberty and one which is worse than the fitna that we are suffering from the invasion of the British or the Americans or the French or any other group of Kafirs. We Muslims must hold on to the wala of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and today, the new slavery is asabiyya. The new ignorance, the new jahiliya, is called patriotism. We don't often recognize our condition and turn our backs. We don't often recognize our condition and realize that we have turned our backs on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this kind of conduct. Today, all of humanity is suffering under this slavery. The Muslim Ummah is the only one that can lead mankind out of this misery. To do this, it must once again establish its loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave us a hadith an Abi Najih, Irbad, Ilbaz ibn Sariya, Sariya, radiyallahu an qal, wa'adhna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maw'idatan wajilat minha al-qulub wa dharafat minha al-ayun. Faqulna, ya Rasulullah, 
صلى الله عليه وسلم كأنها موعدة موعدة مودع فأوصنا قال صلى الله عليه وسلم أوصيكم بتقوى الله عز وجل والسمع وطاعة فإن فإن تأمر عليكم عبد فإنه من يعيش منكم فسيرقت فسير اختلافا كثيرا فعليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين عضوا عليها بالنواجض وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور وإن كل محدثة فإن فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار on the authority of Abu Najih al-Irbaz ibn Sariya radiyallahu an who said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a sermon by which our hearts were filled with fear and tears came to our eyes we said O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is as though this is a farewell sermon. So counsel us. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I counsel you to fear Allah, may he be glorified, and to give absolute obedience, even if a slave becomes your leader. Verily, he among you who lives long will see great controversy. So you must keep to my sunnah and to the sunnah of the rightly guided Rashidin, Khulafa. Cling to them stubbornly. He said, Addu alayha bin nawajili. Bite down on them, hold on to them with the molars of your teeth. That means don't ever give up this allegiance and beware of newly invented matters for every invented matter is an innovation and every innovation is a going astray and every going astray is one of the paths that lead to the hellfire dear muslim brothers it is only then will humanity come to know the true nature of freedom and liberty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, huwa alladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen al-haq li yudhhirahu ala deen kulli wa law kariha al-kafiru. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the truth and the only truth with the huda, the only guidance and the truth in order that that guidance and that truth may prevail over all other ideologies and enough is Allah is a witness. In conclusion, my brothers, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has addressed us Muslims as one ummah, regardless of our locality anywhere in the world, there is no differentiation of objective of Muslims living in Mecca or Muslims living in America or Muslims living in Australia. All Muslims must observe the wala of Allah and His Messenger وسلم, and see themselves as one brotherhood and one ummah under the aqidah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us have the same objectives and the same obligation as prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish Islam completely. Wherever we are, through our intellectual and political struggle, and to carry it to the rest of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let there arise out of you a group inviting to Islam, inviting to the khair, commanding khair, and forbidding munkar. These are the people who are successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, istajibu lillah. When he calls you to that which gives you life, 
O you who believe, answer the call, respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is, demonstrate your wala to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because it is this wala, it is this response that will give you life. Dear Muslims, remember that a life of dignity is a life which is expressed through our allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every other life that undermines this dignity is a life that leads us towards the opposite of dignity and the opposite of illumination which is death and disgrace. وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي بَلَكُمْ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمْ وَبِهَمْدِكُ وَنَشَهَدُ وَنَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا أَنْتَ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُكُ وَنَتُوبُ لَيْكُ And we would like to just select just a lesson from this very broad subject. The subject of Islamic loyalty. Al-Wala. In the Salah, the Imam, he recited the verse, Allahu waliyu ladhina amanu, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim. Allahu waliyu ladhina amanu, yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila al-nur. Waladhina kafaru, awliyauhum al-taagood, yukhrijunuhum min al-nur ila al-dhulumati, ulaika ashabu al-nar, hum fiha khalidun. The translation of which is, has been rendered. Allah is the wali, that he is the protector and the patron of those who believe. And through his protection, in alhamdulillah, Salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa azwajihi wa dhurriyatihi wa man wala fa inna astaka al-hadith kitab Allah wa khayru al-hadhi hadhi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharra al-umur muhdathatuka وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أيها الأخوة الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected brothers Today I would like to just touch upon a subject that has very deep roots and very wide implications. In such a manner that they became proud of their tribe. And it was natural for anyone to be proud of their tribe. This pride would remain with the individual whether his tribe was doing right or wrong. And it caused the individual to have patriotism and to have his or her loyalty to that tribe. And it became natural for the society to be loyal primarily to one's race and one's tribe. It was this tribal loyalty that prevented those people when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called them to Islam, many of them, when they were asked about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they said, yes, they do believe in Allah. Yes, they accepted Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the Messenger. There was enough evidence among them, both in his character and the revelation which was brought, and guidance. He brings those who believe from the darkness of the jahiliyyah into the light 
of Islam. And those who disbelieve, they take as a wali, a protector, a patron, and a guide. There many tawaghit, they are different objects of worship. Their gods, their false gods, their leaders, their heroes, their tribes or their nafs. And these tawaghit, these objects of worship, these false objects of worship, delivers them or brings them out from or precludes them from guidance and delivers them into darkness. And this is because they are the people of the hellfire. And the hellfire is the place as a result of their actions where they will dwell. As I mentioned, this is a very wide topic that touches upon many things. But in my advice today, I want to only touch upon the issue of wala as it applies to the many groups that people find themselves in, engaged in. And as a result, they find themselves attached to. And how attachment to groups undermines the spirit of wala, that is allegiance and loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before Islam, Arabs would be brought up in a tribe that protected their money, their lives, and their honor. 